see if that made any difference or not. Negative. Oh, wait. Yep. Aha. Uh -huh. You good? Yeah. Let me activate it on my end. I can see it. All I right. can see you, me, and the screen. All right. Okay. Let's see. Let me try this. Now, if the font is small, go to one of your other your slides with some of the font, the explanation font. That's probably a slide with, I think that's slide with the most, like, like I said, I'm, I'm a talker. I don't want to read points. So uh, that would be the one I think with the most font. Actually, let me see, just because there's a picture on that page. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Let me, um, let me expand. This is what I did last time we had problems. I'm going to maximize the screen. So now you can't see you and me, but it makes the font a little bigger. So when you have a, screen with smaller font i'm going to maximize and then when you know when you get to a screen that's got less font i'll i'll put it back where they can see you okay. i like them to be able to see you while you're talking okay let me tell her it's solved solved it period All right. had to go live to make it work period don't know why comma because we didn't have to do that last time as i recall period Okay, so Aaron's been taken care of. We're good there. I'm going to pull you up as a chat option. For sure. Yeah, and it, and you know, if there's a question that comes up that I don't know, um, if you can just you know jot that down and and who asked it, um, obviously yeah. we'll go back to them. Cool. Yeah. All um, right. Or if I don't know and you do, obviously right. jump in. Cool. Uh, yeah. We'll do, it. we'll do a tag team. Especially with the area, uh, like I said, I mean, I've only been in this market, um, you know, a year or so, um, as opposed to, and you know, covering ten different states throughout my career at a place for mom. So, if something comes up where I'm like, eh, I know, but I don't know the exact answer, obviously jump in. No worries. Happy to do that. All right, awesome. Uh, oh, I've got to start recording. So we are starting. Uh, let's see. I don't want to upgrade. Oh, it's recording now. Good. Okay. Looks. Sorry, folks. Technical difficulties, just like last time. So I am hoping that that means we're recording right now. So hello. If uh, you are a guest and watching, let me see. I can pull up participants. Social media displays. Okay. So we've got chat up and we are live. I don't see that anybody has yet logged in. As I recall from last time, Jamie, it started populating when people logged in. Gotcha. There is actually the possibility that 4,000 people are watching us right now and it's just not showing me because nobody's written anything in chat. So if you're watching and you and you will go to the chat bar uh if you're already watching us just say hi that would help me to know um so technically we start about 5 30 so folks kind of get off work take a little break grab a drink and, and then log in so let's see yeah it's giving me the option to upgrade now aaron will kill me if i hit that Nope, I am not going to make that decision. Mm -hmm. Pull out the checkbook. What states were you? You were in California or Colorado, I forget, or somewhere else. So I originally started in New Jersey, moved to California, and then um, after about a year in California, um, took a regional position. So I actually didn't cover California, but I covered uh, Western Texas, um new mexico arizona colorado and utah um cool. and then when the pandemic hit um helped cover washington and oregon as well so wow. um yeah and obviously as you know uh difference you know laws and everything in, in different states so certificates uh, of need oh yeah so um california is uh 
it, it's tough. <laughs> but, um, you know, there's no spend down communities, um, which just leaves people in complete limbo. You know, it, You've it, got the no, man, the no man's financial barren yep. land. Yep. It's like, okay, you got 50 grand and you make $2,000 a month. It's like, okay, well, you can go somewhere for a year and then you can go to skilled or near out of luck. Mm. What do they do in California for folks? I mean, do they just end up moving to another state? <laughs> yeah, or, or they just end up, you know, they, they kind of make it easier to have a skillable need to go into long-term skill, which doesn't make sense financially for the state. Yeah, I've got to say, <laughs> yeah, you, you'd have to do something like that, just kind of ease the, the parameters. Yeah, but a, a ton of people. So I was in in Northern California when I lived there. So a lot of um, my well, majority of my business from Northern California and sent a ton of people up to Oregon or, or Nevada to, to spend down states. Um, mm -hmm. So um, yeah, it just, it doesn't make sense. So add to the difficulty of trying to move from home to a long-term care community, because it's never particularly easy. Yep. Uh, now you got to do it across state lines. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. So, um yeah it doesn't make sense um so yeah it's yeah, obviously different rules and, and different laws in, in every state so um yeah north carolina obviously has some spend downs which is nice and and communities that take medicaid whereas you know california there's really nothing <laughs> you know it's either skilled or private pay. wow wow my goodness um jamie I'm I'll hit another technical issue. I'm not seeing any of the guests. Uh, if you are watching live right now, welcome. I will jump into the official welcome, but my uh, my window as the host isn't showing anybody signed in yet. So I'm going to reach out to Frances, Jamie, and see if um, I'm just going to add her to the chat for you and see if Frances can sign on. So I know she's there. Okay. So it'll go to you and Francis, Jamie. Hi, Francis. Can you sign in to our broadcast? Question mark. We had some technical issues and we are live, but it's not showing me the guest list as it did last time. Period. When you sign in, please text me back on this message as well to confirm. Comma, thanks. Here we go. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I I would feel fairly confident, Jamie, that because it's not showing, there aren't guests logged in yet, but now it's five minutes after, and we had 17 to 20 people last month by this time. So given that, uh, sorry, if, if you're watching, uh, the chats aren't coming through. Uh, we had some technical issues as Jamie and I were getting started and, and had to reboot to, to uh, share screen. So Jamie is able to share his screen. Um, we'll allow him to do that in just a moment. So I'm going to go ahead and act like there are people watching us now live. And uh, if you're able to chat to me, great. Uh, I'll tell you what to let me give you my cell number. 336-462-2906, if you'll jot that down again or type it in, 336-462-2906. Um, if you are watching this, please text me, let me know, because it may be that our uh, feature showing how many guests are actually logged in isn't working as well as the screen share not working. So last month we had some other difficulties, apparently not this technical, but... Uh, so we solved those, but yes, please, please text me if you, uh, if you are watching, I'm going to go ahead and 
get started, Jamie, if that's all right with you, we'll launch you into the talk and, and uh, I'll work on uh, as best I can, uh, seeing if we can solve any of the technical issues as we go. So uh, welcome to ACAP community. We are uh, a, a growing national interest organization um, entity that is a not-for-profit serving, ACAP stands for, as you can see behind in the, there you go, uh, adult children of aging parents. So uh, we love uh, our elders, respect them, and want to help them, but our primary focus is, as a group is to focus on the adult child who is helping their aging parent through that journey. So hopefully you're here in that capacity. Anybody's welcome to be here and come and learn. Uh, and and uh, we're happy to have you. So uh, if you uh, found us another way, you can also go to our YouTube channel um, and participate in our live chat. So we hope that you'll do that. If you go to the ACAP, the website, our website is acapcommunity.org. If you'll go to that website, then you can um, log in. You'll see the, uh, the title of this presentation, Residential Care Options as We Age. Uh, there's a section of videos and presentations. It'll, um, and so if you go through the YouTube link, then uh, please participate in the live chat. It's a way to ask questions and get answers to your questions uh, as Jamie does his presentation. Uh, also, please like our uh, uh, like us and like our YouTube page. We're hoping to get a, um, a dedicated YouTube channel if we get 100 folks doing that. We'll, we'll earn that spot. So, uh, also a big celebration for ACAP. Uh, those of you who are friends, returning, and guests, we're always happy to have you if it's first time for you and don't know who we are. We'll, we'll uh, try to explain that a little better. But uh, March is our 10th, this month is our 10 year anniversary of ACAP offering free high quality educational programs to adult children. So, we are thrilled about that. Yay! 10 year anniversary. Um, we also want to thank, so we have chapters, uh, four in North Carolina, uh, Statesville, Winston-Salem, Guilford County that uh, contains Guilford or uh, Greensboro and High Point. Uh, Hickory is the original chapter. It's now the Catawba Foothills region chapter. So they're expanding their reach. And then Center County, Pennsylvania. We have interest uh, in other metropolitan areas across the United States, and we are hoping to add a number of chapters over this next year and even more to follow. So hopefully uh, there will be an ACAP chapter uh, near you. We believe that caring is local. And so uh, although we're broadcasting this content due to COVID, we'll continue to broadcast the content in the future. But uh, we really, really believe there's great value in showing up live and meeting with others who are going through a similar journey and, and getting that, that live interaction. So um, please check out our website to check uh, chapter growth. So this chapter is the Winston-Salem chapter, Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Um, let's see, I already covered a lot of that. Going back to my notes, forgive me. Um, if you've missed a talk and want to see it again, again, the acapcommunity.org website has uh, recorded, pre-recorded podcast, great content information, great speakers, and uh, other videos like this on particular topics, uh, legal documents you need, how to how to deal with driving issues as your loved one ages. That's a really good one. Uh, I want to go back and watch that one myself and some good stuff on dementia, of course. So not every elder has dementia. And so we are not just a dementia specific uh, entity. Uh, we are an adult children specific entity. Uh, we respect your privacy, but we'd love to get your email. So if you want to, uh, while you're on the website, put your email in the box. If you want to be affiliated with a local chapter, uh, you're welcome to watch the content from any chapter, but we'd love to connect with you in that way. And we'll be very respectful of your privacy. We do not sell your email to anybody. Um, let's see. We also want to, to uh, we always appreciate our sponsors. We have a, a number of different sponsorship levels. If you're working for an entity, an agency, particularly in senior health and housing, uh, that you'd like to be uh, a, a monthly sponsor of our, our programs or uh, a larger core sponsor, we call them. We have core and chapter sponsorships at different levels. And uh, the Winston-Salem chapter core sponsor is the Mrs. Norma Charles Sink Fund. 
has been generous to us to make this content possible. So we are very, very appreciative of them and that family. So uh, let's introduce Jamie. Hopefully you can see Jamie in the little side window there. And let me find my notes on Jamie. Um, there we go. So Jamie is one of uh, the other thing that makes these chapters happen live. I happen to be the one of the coordinators for the local uh, chapter leadership team. And the leadership team is comprised for each, uh, each chapter is anywhere from 16 to 22 people. And so uh, I'm one of the co-coordinators. We've got other folks doing different roles. And Jamie, not only is our speaker tonight, but uh, he has been great to come on board with the leadership team here at Winston and uh, is uh, one of our newest leadership team members. And he has signed up, pray for Jamie, uh, <laughs> he has signed up to coordinate our local chapter conference. So every chapter after we've been in, uh, in operation for a couple of years, we host a, a local conference, like a half day conference, a, a kind of a short conference. So uh, in spring of 2023, next year, so a year from now, we'll be doing a conference. Jamie's gonna head that up. He's gonna hopefully have a lot of people behind him helping him get that together, but he's gonna take the lead on that. So we're very appreciative of him joining our team and, and taking on that duty. The reason I talk about the local conferences is we also ACAP Community, which is our national organization, kind of our headquarters, uh, ACAP Community does a, a virtual only conference each year. And it's always the first Friday in November. And so we'll be doing that again. So check out the website. Uh, we're getting, getting that conference together now. And, and we've had phenomenal speakers, uh, or phenomenal speaker uh, previously a couple of times, Tifa Snow, who's wonderful. And so we're, uh, looking to uh, shake it up a little bit, looking at some, some different options, different approaches. Like I said, not everybody has dementia, but uh, we're going to include a dementia component most likely, but uh, look at some other topics perhaps. So um, look for more on that for this year, first Friday in November. So a little bit more about Jamie. Um, uh, his, uh, besides working on the LT, volunteering as we all do, his day job, the one that gets him a paycheck, is he is a healthcare account executive for an agency you've probably heard of, A Place for Mom, a national interest that helps folks find long-term care and, and healthcare options. And he's just mo recently moved here with his family. He's, he's uh, crisscrossed our nation, originally from New Jersey, as maybe you heard us as we were talking when we first went live. Um, uh, went out to California and, and covered five to 10 states nationally, uh, a, a big regional uh, area. So he was the regional director for uh, A Place for Mom before moving here. Uh, Jamie earned his bachelor's degree from Grand Valley State University in advertising and public relations. And I always ask our, our presenters, do you want to wait hold question and answer till the end. You're welcome to do that. But Jamie's been very gracious to say, hey, if you, you got a question as we go, put it in the chat. Or if you got my, my phone number, one more time, 336-462-2906-2906. Uh, send me a chat and our, your questions and I'll flag Jamie and let him know that you have a question. So Jamie, go ahead and share your screen. We got that worked out earlier and we'll go from there. I appreciate it. Thank you, Bob, for the, for the introduction. Very happy to be here um, and um, very happy to be part of the leadership team at ACAP and to talk to you guys um, about some uh, residential care options um, as uh, as we age. So um, we will go ahead and get started here. Um, like Bob said, I've been in the medical space uh, my entire career. The last four and a half years been in senior living with a place for mom. Again, covered um, about 10 different states. So uh, each state is different in terms of their laws and their coverage for senior living. So i um, excited to kind of share what we have going on in North Carolina. So today we're going to cover the different residential care options, um, as well as, you know, what the amenities are, what the care levels they offer and um, kind of the price points. So we're going to kind of start with um, the lowest care options and build up to the, the highest care options in terms of our um, our loved ones. So 
and to Karen, start let, let me interrupt one piece just because of your background and, and breadth of knowledge again you don't don't have a uh, hand on every state but uh, some of those western states we have folks local who are who are helping their loved one at distance so um a specific question somebody one of our guests may have uh or and we have folks signing in from all across the nation sometimes so if they have that question i would say look let's not hold it and run it by you if, if uh and you'll be able if, if you can answer it let them know of course and like bob had mentioned um send it in the the chat or text him and happy to answer of course if i do not know the answer or bob does not know the answer we will um find that out for you and get back to you right away perfect Thank you. Of course. So the the lowest level of care is going to be a senior apartment. That is basically an everyday apartment within a senior community. Obviously, you can come and go as you please. It's a fully staffed, um, fully stocked apartment um, in terms of a kitchen, uh, living space, come and go with a car, whatever you may need. But you do have that senior community, senior activities. Um, but there is no care involved with that. You can obviously bring care in from the outside, but that community does not offer any care um, available. And, and that's going to be um, your, your cheapest price point because you're basically paying for an apartment um, and you're not paying for any care needs. Um, the next step up would be independent senior living. Um, and if you note, um, there's going to be some asterisks and um, different things because everything's a little bit different, right? Care, care provided, little to none asterisks. Some um, independent senior living communities will offer things like med management or they might have um, a clinic um, within their community so they can offer some care, obviously, at a little bit of an extra cost. So if you see an asterisk there, it's just every community is different, right? Within Marriott, you have a Fairfield and then you have a Ritz. So they're all going to be different. Um, an independent senior living community, come and go as you please. Um, you can have a car. Um, meals are provided for the most part, three meals a day. You have your housekeeping, you have your transportation. But the real thing is you have that structure of a senior community. If you have a loved one, who is living alone and they're not thriving or a failure to thrive, a independent senior living community might be a great option for them because they have the structure of the senior community as well as the senior community um, activities, things like that. If somebody note, notice that you're normally down for breakfast at 8.30 and you haven't been down there in two days, somebody might just come knock at your door and and say, hey, what, what, what's going on? And kind of have that structure as opposed to living in a house, you know, where nobody might stop by for a few days. Um, again, that most of them will come with three meals a day. Um, you have your room cleaning, utilities, and everything is included. Um, you can bring care in if you need it. If your loved one might need um, help bathing a couple times a week, there is no problem bringing that in from the outside. So this is a great option for seniors that are still active, but maybe want to downsize and just want to have a little bit more social, um, a little bit more social life within a community. So let's uh, let's go on. And again, if there's any questions, please um, text Bob or, or put them in the chat. I'm happy to answer anything. Jamie, some folks have texted me through my phone. Apparently, the YouTube is being uncooperative they are watching okay so yeah just a reminder just uh, text my phone number if you have questions it's not showing up on the, on our uh, broadcast side wonderful yep definitely let me know i'm happy to answer any questions um the next step would be um uh, adult daycare if you happen to have a loved one who just needs help during the day you might be living with them but you're working so you just need help while you're at work this can be a great option. For the most part, you're going to have nursing on site. You're going to have the care that they need. Make sure that they're, um, if they're a fall risk, they're not falling. Obviously, their medication. Um, and in with our seniors that may have dementia, um, great option because they can't be left at home alone. 
Um, we obviously don't want them leaving the stove on alone, wandering, things like that. Adult daycare will provide that security that they need while you're working. Um, if you're able to be there at the beginning of the day and at night, if they happen to be living with you. Most of the services include, um, they're obviously going to have uh, lunch there available, and a lot of them add uh, transportation. So they can come pick up your loved one um, if you're not able to drop them off. Um, and that is billed daily. So if you happen to be working three days a week at the office, uh, you would obviously only have to pay for three days um, if you're home with them the, the other days of the week. Um, the next step is kind of where we start getting into um, assisted living or residential care homes. So residential care homes are on the same level um, as an assisted living. Uh, you have your 24 hour care. They're able to help with um, uh, your ADLs, which is getting dressed, um, you know, help with toileting if necessary, um, bathing, making sure that they're um, stable on the feet. They're not going to be a fall risk. But what's different between a residential care home and an assisted living is it's a smaller, um, it's basically on a household setting. Um, it's typically going to be a house with five rooms, somewhere between six and 10 um, residents. And what that does is it helps keep the cost down. As we go into the next slide and we start talking about um, assisted living communities, there's a lot of amenities that come with those. A residential care home is a home. They don't have pools and libraries and gyms. But what that does is it helps keeps the cost down. Um, but the care is still there. Um, as we talked about earlier, there's a bunch of asterisks, um, but for the most part, there's going to be um, nursing on staff. Most of them will do dementia care. Diabetes management um, it is difficult in um, the assisted living and residential care homes. A lot of them, um, I shouldn't say a lot of them, some do not administer insulin. So if your loved one happens to be um, needing insulin injections, it limits the, the options for both residential care homes and assisted living, but some of them will do it. And the other thing about residential care homes is some of them are a little bit more specialized um, that can deal with dementia care. Some of them are owned by veterans and it's a veteran house. So all the residents happen to be veterans and things like that. And um, it could be a great opportunity um, to try to keep the budget down a little bit, but find that niche that your loved one really cares about, whether it's um, a veteran home or a garden, they might have a pond, things like that. And then we move into, um, oh, I'm sorry. So services, obviously, with residential care homes, you're still going to have your laundry, your transportation, your three meals a day. And again, you have that senior community, um, which keeps you structured. Um, and like I said, the cost is going to be a little bit less than your typical um, assisted living. So when we get into assisted livings, um, it's going to be a little bit more um, generally than a residential care home. Uh, this is because it's a bigger community. I mean, some of them have upwards of, you know, 100 plus different apartments within them, and they have more community spaces such as libraries and movie theaters, um, pools, fitness centers, um, salons, some of them even have concierge. So um, it, it just adds to, um, you know, that on top of the care um, can be a little bit more expensive than a residential care home. Um, but the care is still there. Um, you're still um, going to be able to take care of, you know, bathing, toileting, getting dressed, um, and different assisted livings or again, um, like a, a hotel. Some of them can do Hoyer lifts if somebody needs a, a Hoyer lift to get them up out of bed. Um, some of them won't do core lifts. Some of them will do insulin. Some of them won't do insulin. So depending on the care needs, um, different assisted livings will do different things. So it, it's really important to figure out what your loved one needs um, and then narrow it down, uh, narrow down the options based on, on the care needs. Um, like I just said, uh, sorry, a little ahead of myself in terms of um, the slides, 
activities of daily living is a term that's used in senior living all the time. Um, that's dressing, bathing, toileting, eating, um, medication management, things like that. One other thing to, to consider, which Bob and I were talking about at the beginning of this, is whether or not um, the community offers a spend down option. And what that is, and it is based on a state by state basis, um, for instance, California, where I covered um, earlier in my career, does not offer this, but North Carolina does, um, is um, a spend down community. And what that is, is let's say your loved one has $50,000 in savings and they're getting Fifteen hundred dollars in Social Security. Um, so, and assisted living is four thousand dollars a month. That money, unfortunately, isn't going to last forever. But as you spend down that savings to the point where you then could apply for Medicaid, that community would then accept Medicaid as a payment. Most spend down communities, you need to pay privately in full, uh, either six months or a year or more. But what that does is if you're able to pay, let's say privately for a year and spend down um, those savings accounts and then are able to apply for North Carolina Medicaid, they're able to stay in that community instead of going to um, a skilled nursing facility, AKA um, nursing home long-term. Um, so that is definitely something to consider when looking into um, an assisted living uh, community. For the most part, residential care homes do not offer that. So, again, something to consider because, as we all know, moving a loved one into a new community is a huge step. Um, and to have to turn around a year, two years later, and possibly move them to a skilled facility, if they can stay in the same place and get the care they need, obviously that would that's what we want for our loved ones. And Jamie, if I may bring up a discussion, one little caveat on that. In North Carolina, yeah, you can spend down. There are qualifiers for Medicaid. So we've had many families over the years move into a lovely building and say, hey, I spent down mom's money. So now she gets Medicaid. It's like, nope, just spending it down unless she meets the minimum criteria, uh, the minimum dollar amount. So and, and not every assisted living um, chooses to accept Medicaid at all. So know that before you go in. I've, I've helped families over the years thought everything was set up. They spent down the money over a year, year and a half, and then had to start the whole process over again by moving to another building altogether. So save that headache. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Yes. Um, not everybody is going to be able to qualify for Medicaid. Um, so definitely check into that going um, up front based on when you do spend that money down at that point, depending on their income, uh, would they qualify um, for Medicaid? And again, like Bob said, not all communities and most of them do not for the most part. Um, so looking into a spend down community, um, definitely want to do uh, your research to figure out what the options are um, available to you. Thank you for that, Bob. So then we move on to memory care communities. It is, um, Bob mentioned, not all our um, aging parents have dementia, but um, there are some that do and, and memory care communities um, cater to those that do. Um, basically, they're on the same level in terms of care um, as an assisted living. They can help with your ADLs that we talked about, dressing, bathing, toileting, eating, um, personal hygiene, things like that. But what they also offer is, you know, trained staffs on the different types of dementia. There's well over 100 different types of dementia um, and we, we all know of um, Alzheimer's, uh, frontal lobe, whatever it may be, um, but they're, they're trained in that and they're trained to kind of de-escalate situations and, and redirect um, our memory care patients um, to diffuse them and to avoid, um, you know, situations that we don't need. So in a memory care community, they're going to be trained in that and they're also going to um, they're going to have more staff per resident um, than an assisted living or residential care uh, community. Um, it is unfortunately the, the highest cost in terms of senior living, but that is, uh, again, because there's more staff per resident and they're trained um, in different dementia situations. 
Um, the community layout could be different. Um, again, they're not all like this, but a lot of them are built in a um, circular um, layout. That way, if your loved one or resident does wander, uh, they will wander in a circle and eventually end back um, to their apartments, um, which which is huge. Obviously, they're they're going to it's going to be a locked facility, so they're not able to get out. Um, most of the time, the courtyards are within the middle of the uh, community, so they can go out as well. Um, Bob, do we have any questions? Uh, I, I feel that um, we're, we're flying through this. Anything on your end so far? Uh, nope, not so far. Okay. So, and if anybody wants to try again, uh, the, if you're able to do the chat through the restream broadcast on YouTube, great. Try that. Uh, otherwise, my phone number is 336-462-2906. Happy to take questions and comments. Thank you. Thank you. Um, again, another option is, is home care. Um, uh, you know, a, as we know, a lot of our seniors and a lot of our loved ones do not want to leave their home, but they do need help with their with their ADLs. And, you know, home care can and can be a great option for that. Obviously, home care, it's non-clinical. They're not going to be, you know, checking vitals or doing IVs, things like that. But it's going to be things like bathing, uh, dressing, toileting. They can do some meal prep. So if they're there a couple of days a week, they can do some meal prep to get it set up for the rest of the week. They can help around the house in terms of cleaning up laundry, any heavy lifting, trash, things like that. Also companionship, you know, if um, your loved one or your senior is uh, living alone and they like to go for walks, but they might be a, a slight fall risk, you have them there to, to go for a walk and make sure that they're safe. Um, if they happen to be in the hospital and, and go home with PTOT and they have some exercises to help get their strength back, they can help with that as well. Um, typically in the North Carolina, you know, triad charlotte area um home care is running about 25 to 30 dollars an hour and currently things always change um currently it's typically a four hour minimum each time they come out that is partially due currently to some of the staffing issues um like a lot of industries are, are having so that could change uh, i know i've worked in different areas and different regions where it was a two hour minimum but basically what that says is Every time they come out, they have to be there for four hours. So if they're coming out in the morning to help your loved one get up, get dressed and get going for the day, um, they need to be there from, you know, eight to 12. They can't they can't break it up for two hours in the morning and two hours at night. If they happen to be looking for 24 hour care, um, there is a break on that. Um, depending on care needs, it can typically be, you know, around four hundred dollars a day. So it, it does add up, but um, if your loved one wants to stay at home and uh, financially doable, uh, this is definitely an option that is uh, available to them as well. And then there's uh, skilled nursing. Um, there's kind of two sides of skilled nursing. There's um, the rehab side. If you had a loved one that unfortunately um, had a fall um, and needed to go to um, short-term rehab to get their strength back. Um, you know, if they happen to break, you know, let's say their arm, um, go there, get their strength back, make sure that they're safe to return home. And then there's the long-term side of a skilled nursing, and that um, is AKA a nursing home. Um, and typically um, that is going to be covered, um, I, I would say, well north of, you know, 90% of the long-term patients within a skilled nursing facility um, that is being covered by um, the state's Medicaid. Um, state Medicaid will, will cover uh, their costs there. Um, if you are paying privately, that is going to be um, the most expensive. And if you're in a skilled facility, um, that is the highest level of care um, that you can have. So let's just say, if a loved one happens to be on a feeding tube, that is not going to be accepted by most um, assisted livings 
um, or memory care communities. If you cross the border to South Carolina, it's 100% no. Um, depending on residential care homes and their staff, sometimes they will take those. But if that's not available, it's going to be a skilled nursing um, facility that will have to take those with trachs and feeding tubes and depending on, on their care needs, um, if they happen to be bed bound, most likely that's going to be a, a skilled option. Um, if you are paying privately, it could be anywhere from 200 to $400 a day um, within that skilled facility. I feel like we really fly through that. Um, I apologize if I went too fast. Um, if we have any questions, um, Bob, do we do we have anything right now? I uh, don't see anything. Uh, you know, I think just kind of a, a, a conversation for a little deeper dive is uh, the the no man's land that you mentioned. You know, California, no spin down, uh, and and not spin downs in every system we have i get that call all the time and it breaks my heart i used to say to families well you you make a dollar too much for north carolina and literally that's the case once you hit the cutoff if mom in her all of her retirement railroad retirement pension whatever social security um if she makes one dollar too much one dollar too much is a thousand dollars too much in north carolina so now it's like okay i'm I used to say, well, you know, can the family make up a $400 a month, not a day, $400 a month difference to try to get her in in, a, uh, in an assisted living? Now, Jamie, I'm not sure pricing what you're saying, but assisted living has gone up astronomically. Um, in the last couple of years, especially COVID just made it worse. It was already on a, on a climb. Um, and I'm telling families, okay, can you make up 900 to a thousand dollars a month sometimes to get a quality assisted living? Yeah. Yeah. Great, great point, Bob. Um, yeah. And it, it's really, really unfortunate. Um, you know, number wise, let's say your loved one happens to be making $2,300 a month. Um, not a ton of savings yeah, with assisted living where it is right now in, in the triad area. Um, again, you have your fair fields and you have your riches, but for the most part, depending on care needs, you're going to start minimum at 25 and more, most likely more closer to 3000 a month. And they're not going to qualify for, for Medicaid. So they're in that, they're in that limbo situation. So they aren't going to qualify for Medicaid. So they aren't going to be able to go to skilled and they're seven hundred, a thousand dollars, like Bob mentioned, short of the cost for assisted living. And unfortunately, it's kind of a broken, um, you know, broken system. And it, it's it's really tough. And like Bob said, you know, you the the cutoff for Medicaid is fifteen, sixteen hundred um, in North Carolina. And, yeah, that that's in memory care. So mom's yep. got to have a qualifying diagnosis that would make her at risk for say wandering out of the building so but yeah if, if she is cognitively functioning but not physically the the north carolina cutoff is about 1228 12, so 20, if mom yes. makes like 1229 a month 1230 certainly 1400 she will not qualify and yes that and rate is rarely adjusted exactly and and memory care again is a step up in terms of cost from assisted living yeah. And, you know, in the, the triad area, you're looking at minimum 35, mm -hmm. most likely pushing four and a half to five thousand a month for memory care. So, you know, again, you're kind of stuck in limbo. Uh, mom's not safe being at home. Dad's not safe being at home. Um, but there is kind of not an option for, for where they can go. Um, so is that bringing family in? Is that, um, bringing home care in? Um, it, it, it's a tough situation. It is. Um, it, I, Jamie, I'm afraid we're going to get back to the, well, I'm, I'm turning 60. I don't know. I'm not going to ask how old you are, but I remember growing up at the Waltons TV show and I bet a lot of our guests do. And I'm, I'm thinking we're going to get back to the Waltons where, you know, uh, multi-generation families are living together. Uh, I, I've heard in some and maybe some of the states you were in where it's really high cost um, that that was a, a popular trend over the last 15 years. So 
bringing mom and dad to, to live with you. Yeah. Yeah. And in a couple of things uh, I, I failed to mention, um, you know, one being long term care insurance. Um, unfortunately, it's few and far between. It's something you pay into for the most part. Um, there's some employers that will um, give that to you. But for the most part, you're paying into it. Um, wouldn't be a bad idea. And <laughs> I'm 37 uh, and I have started to look into it because, you know, if, if something were to happen to myself or my wife, you know, that that question is going to come up. Are we going to spend, you know, four to five thousand dollars a month in our retirement and, you know, deplete what we would hope to give to our children? Um, or, you know, do we get a long term care policy and long term care policies? There's a million of them. And I've seen a million of them. Some will cover fifty dollars a day in an assisted living or memory care situation. Some of them will cover three hundred dollars a day. Some will have a hard cap. They'll give you ten thousand dollars and then you're done. Some will give one hundred thousand dollars and then you're done. So it's something to look into. Um, and if for just broad numbers, I would say right now, assisted living, you know, if you're in the triad or you know, Charlotte market, I would say assisted plan on 4,000 and memory care plan on $5,000 a month. Yeah. So if you're looking 10, 20 years down the line, it, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be, you know, the cost of tuition. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it, it's definitely something to, um, to look into to, to help cover the burden of that cost. The other ops, the other um, thing that I didn't mention, and I apologize for this, um, is for our veterans and spouse of veterans that are out there, um, there is a benefit through the VA, and it's called aid in attendance, and it's specifically for um, our veterans that serve during a conflict. Um, they don't have to be deployed. They don't have to be front lines, but as long as they're active duty one day within a 90-day span during a conflict, they can qualify for aid and attendance, um, you know, uh, you know, the population we're dealing with for the most part um, is Korea and Vietnam. If your loved one happens to be, you know, pushing 90, 100, we could be looking at World War II. Yep. The biggest gap for a non-conflict um, is um, about 1955 through 1961. Mm -hmm. um, and aid and attendance does look at um, what you have coming in the door and um your net worth forgive me bob you might know this uh, i believe in north carolina um again i've covered a couple different states if you have more than one hundred and twenty nine thousand house not included um in assets um you're not going to qualify um but it is a benefit again that goes towards assisted living memory care and can also help with the cost of home care um, in terms of assisted living and memory care, it can be up to about $1,900 um, for our veterans uh, that have served. And for our spouse of veterans, um, it's about $1,250 to $1,300 a month. So if your loved one happens to be making or has $2,000 coming in for Social Security and you're in that gap where you're not going to qualify for uh, Medicaid and you need $3,500, um for assisted living aid and attendance can be a, a huge um asset and it's well earned for our veterans and spouse of veterans um for serving our country i will say this in terms of um helping for the cost for assisted living and memory care it, it does take a little while so for easy math let's say your loved one goes into a community in the beginning of april and they are going to be able to get $1,000 a month for aid and attendance. It might take the VA four months, five months to, you know, finally send that check. They will back pay that. So if it's four months, they will cut a check back to you for $4,000. Um, the process for home care is a little bit quicker. Um, typically, the turnaround is about a month. The difference is if you start home care today and it takes a month, you will not be reimbursed um, that month that you pay. But obviously, as soon as it kicks in, and it's all dependent on care needs. So the VA might say you get four hours um, a week. You might get eight hours. You might get 15 hours. So definitely something to look into. There's different resources out there 
to help you navigate that. Some are free, some charge, um, but definitely something to look into because again, um, these are loved ones that served our country and obviously spouses of veterans um, served our country as well, um, being at home with their loved one, um, being in the, in, in the service. So uh, I apologize for failing to mention that. So long-term care policies and um, aid and attendance can be two huge assets to kind of mitigate, mitigate the cost of both um, assisted living and memory care and as well as home care. One other thing, um, aid and attendance will not go towards independence in your living. Um, there was a few loopholes um, a couple of years ago, uh, but the VA um, kind of shut those down. So it will not go towards independence in your living. Mm -hmm. uh, thank, thank you for covering that. I, my dad was career military, so I always uh, love hearing uh, that benefit explained. Uh, Jamie, I was in a uh, our local industry group uh, in the last 10 days and one of our one of our local elder lawyers i said okay daniel hit me again on this because i always get confused cause... so it's a technicality don't get bogged down with it but yeah if you go to us if you go to skilled nursing and you've got veteran benefits that's part of the application process they're going to make you apply for those and so they can get that payment in assisted living when we talked about earlier assisted living and medicaid benefit technically in the state of north carolina it's not medicaid like all the other medicaids it's called special assistance so it's, it's a special fund the legislature put aside for assisted living residents who are on the lower income side of the scale but uh so i asked daniel has said refresh my memory and he said yeah that there can be conflicts Surprise, surprise, two government entities in conflict with each other and not communicating well. That never happens, right? <laughs> so talk to an elder lawyer. Their, their first uh, half hour or, or uh, hour usually is a free consult. And we've got some great attorneys in this area uh, who do uh, uh, focus on these kind of issues. And so it really is worth a one-on-one -on -one consult with an elder lawyer to say, my mom's moving, we're looking at moving mom into an assisted living. She's a, let's say she's a, a veteran or a widow or spouse of a vet. Uh, she may qualify for Medicaid and VA benefits, the aid and attendance Jamie's been talking about. Have the elder lawyer take a look at both of those because uh, sometimes one is the VA benefits are better. Sometimes the, the quote unquote Medicaid benefit special assistance is better but they can block each other out. And so you want to get the fullest benefit uh, for taking care of moms. So uh, take advantage of the elder lawyers as you're navigating these sorts of things. Yeah, definitely. And, and to your point, um, let, let, let's say your, your loved one is on disability through the VA. They're 80% disability. Aid and attendance will close that gap from 80% to 100%. Um, if they qualify. So I asked my sister who happens to be a social worker at the VA, I was like, if somebody happens to be 100% disabled, does that eliminate them from aid and attendance? Mm -hmm. So she sent it to somebody, you sent it to somebody, you sent it to somebody and got a very vague email back. Um, and basically what I heard and what I read was if they were a hundred percent disabled, then that opens up more benefits, uh, including dental and things like that. But if they are a hundred percent, then they should be able to qualify for aid and attendance on top of that. Not true for 80%. So again, worth <laughs> reaching out to an elder attorney because the VA does not make anything easy. Um, it should be a simple answer, but this email chain went to like five different people and it came back as a very um, vague email. So definitely worth reaching out. But if your loved one is 100%, from what I read, it shouldn't eliminate them um, from aid and attendance as well. Good, good coverage. Thank you very much for that. Jamie, I've got a, uh, I just looked down, there is a text coming through. Um, some places have a requirement that you buy in. What is that about? Definitely, definitely. Um, and, and Bob, uh, jump in um, because I know you this as well. Um, talking about a 
most likely a CCRC community, a continuing care retirement community. And what that is, is um, you, you have all levels of coverage. You have independent senior living. And then if you need to go into an assisted living, it's there on site. If you need to go into a memory care, it's there on site. And then if it gets to the point where you need skilled care, it's there on site. Most of them do charge um, an initial community or enrollment fee. Um, you know, that can be a wide range of things. Also, uh, some assisted livings and memory care will charge an upfront fee as well. I will say this. Depending on the community and depending on their census, it's worth negotiating. If they are at a census where they're 80% full and they're trying to charge a $2,000 um, community fee up front and you're going to be paying $5,000 a month for memory care or assisted living or $6,000 or $7,000, it's worth negotiating for sure. Um, Bob, do you have, do you have anything to, to add to that? Yeah, um, what makes it confusing, just because you have a lovely campus with a fence and a guard gate and all those levels of care on the campus doesn't mean that it's automatically a CCRC. It's actually a designated, so you get, all of these places get licensed by the state, well, not independent livings. Independent livings are kind of private businesses, uh, but assisted livings, skilled nursings, memory cares as a part of assisted, uh, are state licensed by a Department of uh, health and uh, human resources and uh, division of uh, services. They got a weird acronym. I won't even try to remember it now. But the, those the, the communities that have all all of those levels of care on the one lovely campus can go back oddly enough to the Department of Insurance, North Carolina Department of Insurance. Because so you think of think of it like a long term care policy that you're paying not only the premiums to the service but the, they actually provide the services. So it's, it's not just a pure insurance policy. So it's housing and health care combined. And so uh, there's this actuarial process that goes on. But um, so there are three CCRCs in Forsyth County. There are uh, there's one in Forsyth County and one just across the, the Davie County border that are not licensed as CCRCs. And it's. Everything in life is pay me now, pay me later, right, Jamie? You're going to pay sometime. Nobody's going to get out of paying, right? So yeah. um, so the the CCRC model is a little bit of, a, I guess, kind of a pay me now model, but you're getting a benefit uh, that because they're licensed by the Department of Insurance as a CCRC, the, the best example, Jamie, I've, I, I do this when I teach. The best example I heard years ago was there was a lady at one of the homes that uh, passed away at 112. Nobody can convince me when she moved in at 78 and they thought she would live till 98 and they signed the financial agreement that she would live another 14 years at skilled nursing, which is 90,000 a year. And if you do the quick math, I did, it's $2.3 million. So she paid a $100,000 admission fee, which turns a lot of people away. I don't wanna give them a $100,000 admission fee on top of monthly rent. Well, it was a great decision for her. <laughs> she reaped two point three thousand dollars or two point three million dollars in benefits of care that wouldn't have been covered by anything else. So uh, I like the CCRC model uh, personally because you've got kind of that guarantee of whole life care, even if you outlive your your funding. Um, but you know, there's a number of folks that can't afford to pull the trigger on that that level of cost, and that's why so many of the the freestanding options exist that can go into Medicaid, that many, many can go into Medicaid. Yeah. And, and like I mentioned earlier, it, it's the fact of not having to move your, your loved one, you know, multiple times. If they yeah. start an in independent and then they need memory care, they yeah. just go conveniently down to the different side of the community. Yeah. Whereas, you know, putting someone with, with dementia in a completely new situation can be mm -hmm. catastrophic for them. So, mm -hmm. There, there are definitely benefits and, you know, like Bob said, it, the, the money is, is going to come from somewhere. Um, but again, if you're just looking at like an assisted living and they're asking for a $2,000 community fee, that that's negotiable. I mean, we get uh, at my company all the time, different move-in specials. Hey, we're waiving this, we're waiving that. Um, so definitely talk to them. And if they say, 
6,000 say, Hey, can, can you do 50, 200, whatever it is, it, it's worth it because, you know, the worst I can say is no, <laughs> that, that's just me as yep. a, a, a salesperson. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the worst they can say is no. Yep. Uh, one caveat on the CCRCs. I know that some of them will accept your long, big fan of long-term care insurance as well. Please go get it if you can. Um, the uh, many of CCRC will accept that as part of your financial admissions package. So what's the value of your property and your stocks and investments and income, whatever uh, you can count a long-term care policy in. So uh, that can sometimes bridge the gap. In fact, I had a couple come up to me years ago in, a, in an education session afterwards. And they said, you know, we, we had, you know, each husband and wife had a hundred thousand dollars coverage and we were short. And so the admissions person says, would you be able to go up and boost your coverage to 200,000 each? And they said, yeah, we, we could work out those premiums. Okay. And it, that was what bridged the difference for them to qualify to go into the CCRC. So yeah. Like skin a cap. Yeah. And, and one other thing that just jumped into my mind, because as I was, you know, casually looking at uh, different long-term care policies, both aid and attendance and Medicaid will look back five years. So, yeah. Let's just say you're worth a hundred thousand dollars, and now you know I come down with dementia, and my wife puts some money in her name. Uh, they're they're going to see that. So, um, you know, one thing I would say they look back five years. So if you're looking at long-term care policy, maybe you want to look for something that covers five years um, until possibly um, you know then you qualify for Medicaid in a spend-down community or. Um, a skilled nursing facility. So some, something to think about because they, they will look back. Um, a house does not qualify, but you know, if, if you have a chunk of money, IRA, 401k, they will see that um, as they look back. Another good reason to talk to an elder lawyer. Um, and I have people all the time go, I got Jim. Jim's been my attorney for 30 years. And I'm like, Jim's probably great as an attorney but you don't go to your primary care doctor and say, Hey, Frank, my primary care is great too. So I'm going to let him do brain surgery on me. <laughs> a good doctor <laughs> primary will refer to a specialist and a good attorney will also likewise uh, refer to an elder lawyer. Cause that's really their focus. Elder lawyers, estate attorneys, both great at navigating these kind of conversations, the financial side, trying to avoid those gotchas that Jamie's just mentioned. Um, you know, obviously there's fraud out there and people try to do these sweetheart deals and pass their estate on to the kids and, and I certainly understand that desire. But um, more often than not, what I see, Jamie, is, oh, I, you know, took over the power of attorney for mom and to try to help manage her care, not to cheat anybody. You know, I bought her house or my sister bought it for a dollar. And that's what comes and gets you. Uh, bitten in the tail later and you, you can actually face uh, charges if you try to apply for Medicaid within that next five years because the state says, wait a second, you're trying to defraud us. You, you had funds. So um, really good reason to talk to an elder lawyer again as you jump into into this world. Yeah, and, and there, there's so many different services out there um, that, that can help in the situation. Um, you know, I talk to people on a daily basis that are overwhelmed, whether it's elder law or downsize, senior downsizing, whatever it may be. Um, there are definitely services out there to take that burden, you know, off your plate. You're dealing with a loved one transitioning into um, a senior community. Um, that's enough on, on your plate already. So, you know, reach out to the different resources, um, through ACAP or through Bob, uh, myself, obviously. Um, and, and, you know, that burden can be helped. Uh, it's never easy. It's not a fun situation, but there, there are services out there to um, take that off your plate and help and guide you um, to relieve some of that stress and anxiety. Absolutely. Jamie, any kind of closing comments? I, I don't see any more questions coming through the feed. And I know for, apologies again for our guests. We've had some technical issues on the chat function. No, no, this has been great. I really appreciate, um, you know, you, you having me. And again, uh, you know, running through the slides, I, I'd much rather have this back and forth kind of um, commentary um, chatter. Uh, so I, I appreciate, Bob, you jogging uh, my mind on a few things. Um, so I, I appreciate that. 
Um, if, if anybody has any questions, uh, obviously reach out to ACAP, uh, myself. Um, if you see my name on the screen, Jamie Pritchard uh, at gmail.com. Uh, it, it's nice and easy because there's only one Jamie Pritchard in the world. <laughs> so um, I'm happy to help um, in, in any case, uh, get you to whatever resource uh, you may need. So um, I'm really excited to um, work with the leadership team at ACAP and, and happy that I, I got to present and hopefully um, help kind of navigate the senior living um industry because uh there is a lot of different things out there so thank you bob for for letting me present and um you know the the chatter that we had Excellent. and this is a perfect opportunity is, is you saw this as we were figuring out the technical issues and signing on live tonight jamie and i were both lamenting you know we we are social animals and we like being uh this this is an alternate uh communication method the online but boy we, we both love being in front of a crowd and being able to, to engage with the audience so uh, a reminder as as we can safely meet again all of our ACAT chapters um, when we know that we are absolutely protecting you and and your loved ones um, and and the COVID restrictions fully allow for us comfortably to meet together we very much encourage you to come get involved with the local chapter come hear these kind of talks engage with the speakers on site uh, get your questions answered so um, there's a lot of good resources in those rooms across our chapters so uh, always want to make the plug for for meeting live we'll have the videos available this video will be available later once it's uh once it's processed and, and cleaned up a little bit so come back to the website and check that but uh, don't hesitate to, to reach out and get in touch with a local chapter jamie thank you again so much um, Again, for our local chapter, um, we want to thank and, and uh, express our appreciation uh, for the uh, Mrs. Norma Charles Sink Fund, again, which helps make a lot of this happen. Every, everything costs something. So uh, that, that fund has helped us uh, get the, the, the online access for this program and all that makes it, uh, that makes it possible. So thank you. Um, let's see we'll be back next month and that's the thing i miss jamie as we're doing technical issues i don't remember the topic next month but it's on our website acapcommunity.org so i got caught there but please go to acapcommunity.org and check that out please join us again we're going to be working with our it folks to get some of these technical like the chat issues resolved so we'll just get better and better every time how's that so thank you all thank you for your time we appreciate you so much and uh, appreciate what you're doing for your parents, uh, your loved ones. Um, it, we know it's a difficult journey. We hope that you find the moments of joy as you do it. And please, please, as Francis, our founder, always says, take, take care of yourself. Take a moment to take care of yourself as you're doing this. You deserve it. Don't believe otherwise. Good night, all. Bye-bye.